Hi, Paula. Thank you for joining me for this interview. It's my pleasure to be here. So you're the executive director of the Outer Curve Foundation. Tell me a bit more about your role and the Outer Curve Foundation. Sure. Well, what we're doing is trying to help uh, project leaders get their projects off the ground, build community, launch the projects, uh, and, and celebrate milestones as, as they make pro progress with the open source projects. We, uh, we have a, a set of services that we offer to the projects across the life cycle. So we sometimes have projects coming in that are very conceptual, and the project leader is looking to build community and get input onto the design of the project. We have other projects that are quite mature, and they're looking to build community to help maintain and document the project. So uh, we really cover a, a, a very broad spectrum of, of projects in, in, in their life cycle. The Outer Curve Foundation, what is it? Well, it's a nonprofit software foundation, and we actually are just about two years old now. Uh, we were formerly known as the Coplex Foundation. We recently went through a rebranding exercise, and we basically uh, are accepting projects into the foundation that need support across the project life cycle. Uh, we have projects that we, we put into categories, and we call those categories galleries. And so we actually have three galleries right now. And galleries are, are basically either a technology theme or a business theme. So for example, we have the ASP.NET gallery. And those, that, that gallery is comprised of projects that extend the .NET platform. We find that there's a lot of resellers out there and system integrators that are doing great work on the .NET platform. They want to share that work. They want other people to help maintain it. Uh, so they've been contributing projects to the foundation. We also have a research accelerators gallery, which is comprised of projects that help academic researchers do their work. And so the, typically those projects are coming out of universities. We have uh, Oxford and Cambridge and Indiana University uh, contributing projects to us. And, uh, and again, that's really in the intent there is to re accelerate the research process with open source projects. And we also have a data and data language and infrastructure interoperability gallery. And most of the projects in that gallery are looking at data integration and, and language integration. Uh, so the, all the projects that are in that, that gallery fit with that theme. You mentioned the rebrand, mm -hmm. turning the Coldplex Foundation into the Outer Curve Foundation. How did that go? What did you learn along the way? Well, rebranding can be expensive, is, what, is one thing we learned. It was really important. There was a lot of confusion about our, 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 our name. Uh, Microsoft has the Codeplex Forge, and we were not affiliated with the Forge, but they had offered us the use of the name prior to my coming on board as, as executive director. We found that we were spending a lot of time describing the difference between the Forge and the Foundation, and felt that it was essential that we have our own brand. Um, we did hire a branding firm to help us through the naming process and, and had some great names, including Outer Curve. Probably one of the biggest challenges, in addition to you know the trademark process, was finding a domain. Uh, so you, get, you, you could fall in love with a name, but there'd be no rational domain that you could use that would associate with that brand. So, um, so that was a bit of a challenge. I think the other thing is, as a nonprofit, we couldn't spend the kind of money that a traditional commercial company would spend if they went through a rebranding exercise. You know, we couldn't do advertising or things like that. So it did have a little bit of an impact on awareness of, of us as an organization because we really couldn't put the same level of investment in, in the rebranding marketing that a, a commercial company would. So a renaming process sounds like it can become a nightmare. What did you do so that actually it yielded some good results? Well, we did hire a branding firm, um, a small uh, firm in Boston. We talked to a number of firms and we felt that this firm could meet our needs. And they interviewed our board members, they interviewed project leaders and other people boards from our board of advisors to get the essence of, of what we were trying to accomplish with the foundation. Uh, and then they went through a series of exercises where they provided us with options and we narrowed it down. Uh, we got to finalists 
And I, th I have to say, the, the biggest frustration was just not being able to select names that you liked because of the domain issue. Um, and, and then in parallel, we were working with our trademark attorneys. Uh, what they would do is a, a, you know, a first pass to see if it was even reasonable to choose a name. And then once we'd get to the finalists, they do a, a deeper dive. So, it, you know, you're, you're conscious of the fact that you're spending money and the clock is ticking. And each time you go back and do another selection, you've got to go back through the legal process and the trademark process. So you have to be really careful to um, not overanalyze it. Uh, you've, got, you've got, you know, good recommendations from the branding agency based on the messages and themes that you've articulated to them. And at the end of the day, once you make that final selection, you really have to embrace it and, you know, not be disappointed that something else didn't work out. You, you need to embrace it, make it yours, and, and really move forward in a positive way. So how does the Outer Curve Foundation raise its visibility through marketing, PR, perhaps community development measures? Yeah, well, we do. We do have a, a professional PR agency that has other open source clients, so it's helpful that they have very good relations with the journalists that are covering open source. Uh, so that's an important component. Um, we are active bloggers, both myself and and our technical director Stephen Wally. Um, so we do try to blog on things that are. Uh, beyond just the the core messages of the foundation so that we get broader coverage people and we, we create a dialogue with people in the open source community. These are thought leadership topics? Yes, absolutely. And then, um, of course, we what we do with each project that comes to the foundation, and we're at 15 projects now, uh, what we do before we launch them is we, we sit down with a project leader virtually uh, and we talk to them about what's what's their goal for the project is it about building community is it about getting more people using the, the software again depending on where they are in the life cycle of the project their goals may be different and so we we tailor a specific launch plan for them and 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 a set of programs that we want to implement over time and and put the re proper resources behind it to help them move their project forward that's interesting. So your foundation actually acts as a kind of business development agency for its community members? Yeah, I would say that we, you know, in addition to providing IP management and oversight for them, what we really want to do is fill in where they have gaps. And typically they have strong technical skills, but they, they need support operationally, they need support on marketing, they need, need other business services, and that's what we try to provide to them. And is it hard to convince them that they should perhaps invest time or money in doing that? Uh, they don't have a problem with t investing the time, but most of these projects are, are not in commercial development yet, or they're not uh, being marketed commercially, so th they don't have money. Um, and the way that the foundation operates is our sponsors are basically funding the investment we make in these projects rather than the project leaders themselves. We do require the project leaders have a corporate sponsor so that there's continuity for the project, but we actually determine how, how to fund the, uh, the ongoing services to the projects. What are three tips and tricks that you usually tell them? Well, I think um, one of the important things that I think uh, a, a project leader really needs to think about is who is going to benefit from the project uh, and why. And uh, oftentimes a project, project leader will have a great idea because it's going to help solve a problem for them. Uh, and what we want to know is, well, how will it solve problems for other people so that we can help them articulate and, and develop an audience. Uh, and who is that audience? Is it an enterprise IT professional? Is it another developer that needs tools to, to, to round out their portfolio? Uh, it's important to know who else can benefit from the technology because they can become active community members. Cool. Thanks, Paula, for providing some insights in your role and the Outer Curve Foundation. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.